As a junior doctor, I struggled with simulation. I found it hard to suspend my disbelief when talking to a plastic doll. I mean, even as a child, I didn't enjoy playing with Barbie. In the debriefs, I never seemed to know the answer to the question, guess what I'm thinking. And it really seemed to never make sense to me how all of these plastic dolls somehow seem to go into cardiac arrest for no apparent reason. We're going to take you on a journey through simulation here at SMAC. We're going to start by introducing you to Leah here today in the Sim House, in the IED, and in the ICU. We'd like for you to share your ideas with us there about how we can make simulation better and take it from the Sim Lab back into the real world. You see, there's three parts to simulation, the beginning, the middle, and the end. The beginning starts with the pre-brief after you finish your preparation. This is your pre-brief. We'd like to pre-brief the observers so that they can focus their observation to improve for the learning. But the pre-brief is also where we make uh, points for psychological safety for our participants. And so we ask them to immerse themselves for their improved learning. It really does help take them from the sim lab back into the real world. The scenario, of course, that's where all of the learning takes place. Well, no, not really. It's actually where things vibrate from. It's central, but it's not where most of the learning happens. That happens in the debrief. The debrief is where we unpack what happened. We begin to reflect. We take our time to ponder what happened, where our participants did, and how they made ad adaptations to their behaviours for, for the best patient outcomes. But the scenario begins with the core. The core of that is the case. The case is where everything comes from. The case needs to come from reality so that it resonates with real life. But I'd caution you against, against using one that does truly replicate real life. So that case should have correct physiology. Give it a condition, a cause, complications, and comorbidities. But the case needs to become a patient. In fact, no, it needs to become human. Give it a husband, a child, a family, and a story. You see, life is complex and everything intertwines. The challenge is finding the power of simplicity, but without being too simplistic. Add challenge to your scenarios and to your simulation. It takes people from their comfort zone and puts them out into the learning zone. Be mindful, though, not to add too much pressure, as that might break them. They might make the, it might make them believe that this challenge is actually more of a threat, and then the learning is lost and the learning is gone. Give every twist and turn a reason for being there. Find, find something that is simple, be it the environment, the equipment, the stories of the bystanders or the complexity of the case. But be mindful to keep it real, keep it authentic, and align it with your objectives. Don't just give your participants a twist and turn because you feel like giving them some form of a trick. But we need to somehow work out to make this somewhat real for our participants. Give them real packs so that they begin to know their real gear. Work with colleagues, train with others that you would normally work with, be them paramedics, be it nurses, be it the fire brigade or police. That's because it helps for teamwork. It builds teamwork, builds communication, but also, fabulously for us, it means that you might encounter a friendly face on scene that you know that you've trained with before, and then that really helps you to work forward and look after the patient the best that you can. Consider using humans as real patients. Get away from the plastic dolls. That means you can talk to them, you can communicate with them, but then you gain a real connection with that human that's there in front of you as you understand their story. But they can also react and respond. So, prepare for the expected 
and rehearse for the unexpected. Be mindful that things happen that you don't necessarily expect, like earlier today. And what you need to do is have your confederates be aware of how they might need to respond. If, something, if the participants ask for something that you wouldn't otherwise expect, like manual inline stabilisation to a bystander who's non-medical, they need to respond with, but what's that? Because they wouldn't necessarily know that. And that's actually really hard for some of us confederates to, to do when we're role-playing in a scenario where we actually understand everything that is happening, but we need to pretend that we don't. The other thing with confederates is that they also can provide us with the ability to avoid the voice of God. So by that I mean ask the confederates to provide the information that you can't provide through use of your simulation. So if someone's auscultating the chest, then the confederate can feed back in an authentic and real reason a way to listen that what the sounds of the chest might be. But accept then that things might go right as often than they go wrong. See, your version of right and their version of right might not necessarily be the same, and you need to unpack that in the debrief. That's what the debrief is there for. So approach that debrief with curiosity and be mindful of the perspectives and uh, perspective of others. Also, when you expect that things, accept that things might go right, be mindful again that when things go right, it's because of the adaptations and the, the behaviours that people have done in response to the challenges that you have put forward to them. Remember that no two simulations are the same, neither are two missions. So be mindful of that as you work through the scenario. Take time to reflect on the scenario that you, that you are putting forward. Ask for feedback from the participants that you're working with. Debrief with your team and also have some self-reflection. One of the things that I like to do is actually to run the same simulation over and over again. That pause, reflect, repeat, pause, reflect, repeat. The advantage of that for me for simulation is I can understand how my simulation works, reflect on it, review it and update that as I need to. But remember, it also has the advantages for the organisation and the service. You see, you figure out how work is truly done rather than how it is imagined. Our simulation journey is going to continue right now. Your pre-brief is over. I'd like you to watch and learn from Leah as we watch her journey over the next few days. You see, there's power in simulation for realism, adaptability, and our ability to reflect. So let's see if we watch Leah now and continue her journey. The debrief will happen in the Sim House today, tomorrow, and the day after. I hope you enjoy meeting our a patient. Smack Hems team, you have been tasked to a woman who has fallen from a cliff approximately eight metres. She is unconscious, it is a difficult access area and will require you to winch into the scene. Note, it is last light in 20 minutes from your arrival. Oh, yeah. It's okay, they're here. Oh. Thank God. Oh, 
OK, Sam. Hello, how are you going? I don't happened. I think she just fell. One sec, one sec. What's your yeah. name? I'm, I'm Nat. I'm Alex. Ooh. Nat, this Hi. is Sam. So Hi. we're part of a medical team. What's our patient's name? This is Leah. Do you know her? No, no, I don't know her all at right. all. Okay. Hi, Leah. <laughs> just tell us what happened, Nat. I, I, I was just walking down there and I just heard this huge <laughs> crash and I, I, I didn't see anything. But I think she fell from like all the way up there yeah, through sure. all the trees and everything. And, yeah. and, and she was just here. Uh, so I just, I just called for some help not sure. that long ago. Okay. And what was she like when you found her? Uh, she was totally, totally unconscious. She wasn't doing anything okay. at all. And... Well, you've well, done a great job. Well done. Thanks. You're all right. So I'm just going to have a look at you, Leah. We're just going to figure out where you hurt, OK? All right. Can you remember what happened? I don't know, but we're going to find out. Excellent. Got some mobs. Heart rate's 110. Yep. Blood pressure's 110 on 75. Yep. And uh, SATs are 98. Good work. Okay, Leah, <laughs> open your eyes up. Here's a little syrup here. Alright Alex, next we need to get her out of here. Yep. It's uh, coming into last light. Yep. Um, we can do a bit of light sedation. Yeah, I think it's got hairs on it. She's pretty agitated. Yeah, I'm actually, thinking we're probably going to work toward an RSI. I think that sounds good. We're going to do it. Carry her up and do Carry it. Carry up and do it the winch site. Yeah, we'll do an intubated stretch of winch. Probably the best plan. Okay. Sounds good. Yep. Pace. Right, team, we'll go through our pre anesthetic checklist. A little bit of quiet. Mm -hmm. Right, guys, airway plan verbalised. As discussed. Uh, Check's complete. Okay, nature style is in now. We're getting up to a minute. Capnograph trace going flat, confirm apnea? Yeah, patient's apnea. And how's the jaw tone? Yeah, nice and loose. Yeah. Light source, thanks. Coming over. Oh, I've got pharynx. Epiglottis. In the molecular. Pogo's 80. Bougie, thanks. Bougie's going through. Tube on, thanks. Passing the tube. I've got the bougie. Okay, I have the tube. Get that lip back. Nice. Okay, seeing the cuff go past. Black lines. Looking for 21 at the lips. Bougie out. Bougie out. Cuff up. Looking for herniation. Cuff inflated. Looks good. Circuit on. Light source out. Okay. okay, confirming. Yeah, we have a waveform. Yep, got mist in the tube, just auscultate. Alright Doc, you want to set up the ventilator? We need to be out of here in 10 minutes before last light. Oh, yeah. Where are you sore? My head. Your head's sore. <laughs> okay. All right. There doesn't seem to be any facial fractures. Airway seems okay. Trachea is midline. Mm -hmm. So a little bit of sedation. I guess we just need to get her up to the winch point. Yeah, it's last light's not far off. So. so what do you think? Just some ketamine and carry her up and. A bit try of light sedation like and that. winch out there. Yeah. I yeah. think that sounds All pretty right. good. See how we go. Yeah. All right, guys. Eyes on your partner. On lift. Ready. Steady. Lift. Nice and slow. Good pace. 